Hello, my name is Rose Shaver and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm going to be recommending to you nine books that I think are really easy to read. This idea came to me because over the past week or so I have had Covid again and whilst I am very much on the mend now, I feel a lot better, um, my brain was not braining in the way that it should over the past week and so I have needed to read books that are a little little bit more simple. Um, so I've got nine recommendations for you for books that you could read if you have Covid or any other kind of burnout that's a reason that you want something easy to read or just for fun. Um, I did have ten books on this list but I put the book I was currently reading on it and when I got to the end of the book I decided I didn't like it so we, that is how we've ended up with nine books. Um, so without further ado let's get into it. First on my list I have a children's book. I think that children's books are obviously written for someone with a, a lower reading age, they're written for children um, and so that can make them very easy to read but they can also often be very escapist and take you to a different world. The one that I'm recommending is the one that I always recommend which is Nevermore by Jessica Townsend uh, which I absolutely love. It is a series of books, three of which have been released, the fourth one is coming out this year about which and I am very excited about that. And the first one that tells the story of Morrigan Crow, who is a cursed child doomed to die on her 11th birthday. Because she is cursed, everyone believes that all the bad things that happen around her are caused by her and this curse. But on her 11th birthday, someone intervenes and whisks her away to the world of Nevermore, somewhere she didn't even know existed, a city in the free state. And while she's there, she's being put forward to become a member of the Wondrous Society, which is a society kind of school, but also it continues on for the rest of your life, for people who have knacks. These knacks can be something mundane, such as um, cooking or surgery, or they can be something arcane, which is something magical. For example, being to able to persuade someone using just your voice. The only problem is that Morrigan doesn't have a knack at all um, and so she doesn't know why she's being put forward. And that is how the adventure begins uh, and Morrigan's attempts to get into the Wondrous Society and to evade capture and being sent back to the place from which she came and it is a really great adventure story with a lot of heart. The characters feel well fleshed out but in a very good like children's book way where they feel magical and whimsical and a bit over the top but without it being so much that they feel um, unrealistic as people, they still feel like people. It has all the whimsy that you would expect from discovering a magical world alongside someone who didn't know it existed. Um, although it's not really magic, um, there are there is a different explanation in this book but it has the same feeling. It is really wonderfully done, like I said all of the relationships feel great, the peril feels like the right level of peril and the writing is uh, wonderful as well. So if you don't really read children's books, I don't read a huge amount of them myself, um, but this one really worked for me and I think it could work for you as well. Second on my list is Spindle's End which is a piece of young adult fiction. Again another genre that I don't usually read and this is young adult fantasy which I definitely don't normally read. In fact it's a fairy tale retelling um, so it's a incredibly popular genre but not one that I have a huge experience of but I really enjoyed Spindle's End and again it has similar feeling um, of there is peril, there is darkness that happens but it is not too far that it becomes a difficult thing to read or um, grating at all for me. I found it very enjoyable. So Spindle's End, as you can probably tell by the title, is a retelling of Sleeping Beauty um, about a baby who is cursed on her the day she is born um, to die by touching a spindle. Our main character, who is the niece of a fairy, ends up uh, give, offering a little piece of magic to this baby and taking the baby with her back to their small village to raise her as a village child. Sleeping Beauty character grows up not knowing at all that she is a fairy, not knowing at all that she is a princess um, and our fairy characters try to protect her and she grows up in the small town, we have a blacksmith and various other small town characters who get to know our princess. <laughs> Um, and of course we are leading towards her 21st birthday when she will come of age and may die at a spindle. So there are elements of the Sleeping Beauty story as you know it, but it is um, altered and slightly different. And Robin McKinley, who is the author, she um, is quite good at doing this and I enjoy her stories because they have the whimsy of a fairy tale retelling, they have humour, um, but they are not as knowing as I think some of the others um, are. I think that it really grounds itself in the time period and allows itself to be like fantastical and magical and romantic. It's neither hewing too close to the original or trying to become more dark and gritty. It is um, really quite fun and enjoyable. If you enjoy things like Howl's Moving Castle, I think you would enjoy this book as well. Something else that is a little outside of my comfort zone is romance novels. Um, I have read a few contemporary romances recently and really not enjoyed them, but the one answer that I'm going to recommend you I do 
and I think that they are perfect for if you are looking for something easier to read but not annoying. Um, and this is the works of Vary McFarlane, particularly If I Never Met You. Vary McFarlane is a rom-com writer or a closed door romance writer, um, so she writes books that have comedy in them, they're quite funny and amusing, um, and they also are romances with the typical romance genre of, um, in her case, in Vary McFarlane's case, of man meets, of woman meets man, and ending in a happily ever after, as you would expect from the genre, but they are closed door romances, so they're not steamy in any way. If I Never Met You tells the story of a woman who has been in a long-term relationship with a man who breaks up with her at the beginning of the book, because he feels like he's not ready to be committed. Um, but they work together, and he ends up in a, a relationship with someone else, and she so she finds out that their relationships may have overlapped. Our love interest is a man who also works at the same law firm, um, but has a reputation for being a womanizer and is not taken seriously, and he wants a promotion. Um, and he thinks that if he has a steady girlfriend, then the partners will take him seriously. So they begin to fake date to get back at her ex and to help him get a promotion. And it is a really fun book and I really enjoyed it. And one of the things that I love about Vyra McFarlane is her books are very funny and lighthearted, but they also deal with difficult topics. Um, so our main character is dealing with uh, racism in the workplace and with sexism in the workplace as well and how those two things interconnect. I always enjoy that um, Vyra McFarlane's characters have a group of friends and all of their friends are very well rounded um, and they don't just feel like two dimensional characters. Something that I notice with a lot of romance is that so much focus is put into our male and female lead that there is nothing for anyone else. Um, and they are all kind of just stand-ins, just a series of adjectives and never really that explored. Whereas I think Barry McFarlane is very good at making all of the relationships seem well fleshed out and realistic. Um, so yeah, I would recommend pretty much all of her books. There are some that I like more than others, um, but uh, If I Never Met You is one that I enjoy. And then the final one that is outside of my comfort zone is The Philosopher's Flight by Tom Miller. And again, this is another fantasy, and this time a historical fantasy set in the beginning of the 20th century in America. In this world, there are witches um, who are mostly women who use um, who do various different kinds of magic, but the most difficult kind of magic is flying. Our main character is the son and brother of two very powerful witches who have taught him how to fly um, because he does have magic. Not everyone has magic, but he does. And so he wants to go to university and join the the flyers to learn how to become a flyer um, so that he can get involved in the war effort uh, working as a flyer. Because he is a man he faces a lot of stigma uh, from other witches, from, from him trying to like muscle into their their world and also for him probably not being very good because he won't have as much power as women have. Um, but And at the same time the women are also facing these, this um, terrorist organisation of men who are think that witches should be grounded, should not be allowed to do magic, should be back in the kitchen. Um, and so it's about him getting into the university, trying to become a flyer and um, how this his ragtag group of people that he flies with, which is really well done. And I really enjoyed this book. I really wasn't expecting to when I read it, um, but I really did. It worked for me very well. I think that, again, what I really liked about it is all of the characters are very fleshed out and the world is very well built. This early 20th century East Coast America uh, university town is very well developed and all of the characters that he works, um, that he interacts with, I also felt like were really well developed. The politics of the world as well were very well uh, fleshed out and they all felt really realistic and I really enjoyed that aspect of it. If you normally read historical fiction and you want something a bit lighter and a bit different then I think this one might work for you too. Right the next ones are all a little bit more in my wheelhouse and one that I have not stopped recommending since I read it at the end of 2021 is Still Life by Sarah Winman. This is a really wonderful kind of family saga epic kind of book. It's very long um, which may seem counterintuitive to go for a long book when you are feeling like you want something easy to read. It's not quick at all but I think that it's a world that is easy to lose yourself in and there is the characters are so wonderful and the plot is slow enough to not tax your mind but enough there to keep you drawn through um, that I think it would really work. A Still Life is uh, the story of Ulysses who is a soldier during the Second World War who meets um, Evelyn who is uh, an artist and she is helping to find the correct homes of art that the Nazis and um, Mussolini have stolen and take it back to where it is supposed to go at the end of the war. And she tells him to go to Florence um, because something magical will happen to him there and he goes to Florence. And then he goes back to the East End, um, to the pub where he worked and grew up um, and all of the people he grew up with. Um, but one day he receives a letter from Florence telling him he has been left an apartment. And so he and some of his various people that have been around him go to Italy and start their new lives there. 
and we follow this group of people um, as they over the next decades following the war uh, as Evelyn and their near misses the ways that they normally nearly come back to meeting once again in Florence. It is so beautifully evocative of the city um, and a really sunshiny warm book and it doesn't shy although it doesn't shy away from the darker aspects of humanity it does so in with so much love and so much heart that I think it is very easy to read. It's a very compelling book with really lovely writing that feels like a classic even though it's a very new book it feels like it has existed for a very long time. If you like books like I Capture the Castle I feel like it has a similar vibe to it with it, the strange cast of characters from this East End pub we planted in the Tuscan soil. It is really lovely and a wonderful read and I think um, just completely losing yourself in it makes it so easy to keep going with. Now we have one fairy tale retelling um, but one that is a little weirder and a little darker and that I absolutely loved is What Is Not Yours Is Not Yours by Helen Oyeyemi. Now Helen Oyeyemi is not normally an author that would make it on a list of books that are easy to read. A lot of people find it difficult and weird to discover what's going on. But I think the reason What Is Not Yours Is Not Yours works as an easy read is because it is a collection of short stories. This of course means that it's not too taxing for you, you can put it down and pick it up after only reading a few pages and you have like read a complete story. It's less demanding in that sense, but also I think the weirdness of Helen Oyemi's fairy tale retellings are much more understandable in a very contained short space. And now, I haven't read her novels, so saying I can't say that they definitely are, but I do think that that weirdness in general, it is easier to suspend your disbelief and to just let things happen when you aren't having to um, sustain them over the course of a long period of time. There are short stories in here that are retellings of Little Red Riding Hood and a series that are retellings of Pinocchio as well as others that just have that fairy tale vibe. They are also slightly interconnected with characters who have been in the background of one story coming out as the foreground characters in another one. There are moments of darkness and violence and body horror in here so if that's not your thing for an easy read then this wouldn't be for you but the reason that I do think it does count as an easy read is because it is so compelling and so beautifully written and so much fun um, that I found it's very easy for me to read and it didn't require as much brain power as perhaps it would over a more sustained period of time. It, it was easy to let the things wash over you and just to delight in the weirdness without having to really try to properly fully understand what was going on. If that sounds like something that you enjoy doing when you read then I would definitely recommend. Now a piece of non-fiction that I think counts for an easy read is Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wilde Kim Kimmerer. Now this might not sound like an easy read because it is about climate change and about um, <clears throat> the air tax on indigenous <laughs> ecosystems uh, by co colonialist forces and by um, modern like corporations and things so the actual subject matter is not easy but the reason that I think it counts is because Robin Val Kim Kimmerer is such a great storyteller and so whilst she is a botanist and um, very well versed in science the way that she tells the story of the ecosystems and the land is much easier to comprehend than that scientific uh, perspective makes it seem. She tells stories of her as a teacher taking classes out into the ecosystem where she grew up where she lived, she tells stories of walking through the Pacific and Northwest forests and she tells the stories of, a of the destruction of a lake that was important to a community and every one of these is equally warmly told, equally compelling and easy to continue with. She doesn't shy away from sharing facts and statistics and things but it's all wrapped so well in a story that that makes it easy to read. Her writing is absolutely beautiful and can transport you to the places she is describing whether that is um, an entire chapter about her weeding a pond when she gets really into the minute details of the flora that is surrounding this pond. Um, it is kind of almost calm and meditative in, meditative in the way she's talking you through her actions and I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed losing myself in the places that she is talking about and like I said the voice that I think is particularly strong which is unusual not always true of non-fiction. Um, I think that that voice and the warmth of that voice is what makes it so compellingly readable and easy if you are looking to read something that will just draw you along without you having to make a huge amount of it. And then finally two classics that I think count as easy reads. And the first one again is more an author than a specific book um, but I'm going to be talking about The ABC Murders by Agatha Christie. Um, Agatha Christie is obviously a 
the queen of detective crime fiction um, and I really really enjoy reading her books. I've only really read her Poirot books, I haven't had a huge experience reading her other series but I absolutely love reading her Poirot books, they are so easy to read because they are compelling mystery, they are fairly formulaic in that you know what is going to happen and how Poirot is going to solve things. They are not like um, reading Sherlock Holmes where you could solve a, a Poirot if you wanted to, you could if you sat down to think about it. Um, you, we usually know who is doing things and where the red herrings are and I really really enjoy that. Um, I think you don't necessarily always work it out but the fact that you could um, makes them more um, easy reads for me I think. You're not just being blown away by the genius of one uh, Poirot, you are going along with him and I really think she's very good at drawing characters as well although there are stock types that reappear throughout her mysteries um, I think that she does a good job of making them humorous and um, it, they're quite fun to read I mean she, she's definitely not forgiving of uh, left-wing politics um, and she normally draws those people as quite ridiculous but they are still very enjoyable reads and I think that if you are into reading from that time period it feels very relaxing for me to read that time period I think because I grew up with them they feel um, very cosy they're definitely um, a cosy mystery whilst I'm not hugely familiar with that genre the Poirots themselves I think are wonderfully done um, and so if you've not ventured into Agatha Christie because you are put off by the fact that they are classics, they are super, super accessible. Um, and I would recommend the ones that I've read and liked. I've liked um, The Murder of Roger Ackroyd, uh, The ABC Murders, Murder on the Links, Death at Hill House, is that what it's called? Or Murder at Hill House? Something. I've enjoyed all of those. Um, so yes, I would definitely recommend that to you. And then finally, the other one that I think is an easy read um, is... The Pursuit of Love and Love in a Cold Climate by Nancy Mitford. These two novels revolve around a family who is loosely based on the Mitford family and her sisters and they are a ridiculous group of very posh people in the early 20th century in the English countryside um, who are <laughs> really awful to one another um, in a really amusing way to read about. They are kind of a secret society and it's kind of among themselves as siblings and it's social satire in a way that I found really amusing. One focuses on one of the sisters and one focuses on their cousin who often comes to stay with them as they are going into adulthood um, in during the Second World War. And whilst there is a lot of sadness in them, I find them very like acidic and easy to read for that reason. They are funny and humorous and never taking you can never take them seriously, they're always kind of slightly sarcastic um, and kind of judgmental of the characters that you were reading about. But I find it's such a fun read um, and they're again, they're quite short for classics um, and I think they are very compelling classics. If you enjoy things like Jane Austen then they are similar in tone I would say in terms of that social satire um, but they are a bit more acidic and the characters aren't as likeable. Um, so if you don't like reading about unlikable characters then I wouldn't recommend Nancy Mitford but if you enjoy that because they are unlikable in such interesting ways there's a lot of weird stuff in there like uncles marrying nieces not blood related but age difference um, that is not like something that you would see as good but it's not about the characters being moral or anything um, I find them enjoyable to read despite the immorality it's kind of a fun immorality um, and I don't know if that's something that everyone else experiences but it's definitely how I feel about these books um, so I would recommend them if you haven't read them before and those are the nine books that I think are easy to read and that you should read if you are having trouble with your brain the way that I am right now thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video let me know your answers to this question in the comments down below I would love to know some of your favorite easy reads remember to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and to subscribe I've done new videos twice a week so I will see you again very soon. Thank you for watching, bye bye!